What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to a brand new video. It, it, it was a good game, alright? A good performance, much better than last season at Anfield, but it's the same old frustration because the two games we've lost this, se this season, City and Liverpool, we could have won City, we could have, you know, got some goals. This game, we had our chances, it's so frustrating, we could have won this one. Well, not won, but at least drawn. We we messed up this game ourselves. You know, we had chances, and definitely there's a lot of positive uh, stuff to talk about. You know, Reese James looked uh, great back from injury. Lavia looked great. Jackson scored. Moresca's looking like proper solid tactician. But we didn't win. At the end of the day, winning is what matters and we failed again against a big club so that's City and that's Liverpool we're seven points off the top Liverpool you know City were drawing at a point if we would have won we could have gone one point behind the top so yeah I mean uh, lots to talk about guys today so drop a like if you end up enjoying and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here um, let's start with the lineups, I guess, because lineups were, it was such a adrenaline booster, the lineup, because you saw Reese James at right back, Gusto left back, Lavia starting, which was good, in my opinion, that's a brave decision by Moresca, but Enzo anyway does tend to like, you know, take time to recover after international break, because he goes to Argentina, plays and stuff. But yeah, good decision for Lavia because Lavia offers that defensive stability, you know, you can't run past him as easily and Lavia was amazing today. Lavia and Reese James, these two guys back from injury, great. The only issue I have with Reese James is in this new Moresca system, I see his attacking talent getting limited. You know, that could be a possibility. Hopefully, you know, this is just Liverpool. Hopefully, you know, we see him in his true attacking talent form in the coming weeks. But yeah, guys, I think, you know, we've always heard the club are cautious with Reese James, cautious with Reese James. But even though Reese James was technically in training last week, I don't think that's 100% true because back when he got injured in August, they told us one month and now it's been two. I think they really have been like 110% sure this time. I think this time is really when they've taken like no risks at all. You know, he could have been back after the September international break, now that I think about it. But they were like, no, we'll give him another month. We want to be absolutely sure. And he looked fit. He looked ready. He looked fit. He looked solid. But then there were some problems, which we'll talk about. So the game started off pretty good. You know, we were in control first 20 minutes, getting more of the possession, building forward. We weren't taking many shots, though. Palmer was, you know, they Jackson was just... He's meant to be in the defence line, so he was naturally covered. They just had Trent on Sancho, Robertson on Madueke, and everyone else in the midfield and defence was on Cole Palmer. Everyone. The only, like, moment I saw him free was that shot he got. He got the ball inside the box, turned, left foot, tried to shoot it, went over the bar. So, yeah, but then, as we're doing good, there are some shaky moments. Six minutes in, you know, they put the long ball in, Jota trying to counter, Tosin brings him down. I was scared, because the referee went for his back pocket. I was scared it was a red card, but thankfully it was yellow, especially because Colwell was beside him, that's the reason. And then the penalty scares, because Mo Salah started attacking down that wing, and Gusto, even though he's fast, he was getting dribble. And Colwell, even though he's been good this season... He was very on edge today. He was kind of panicky the way he was looking. Tosin did not have a good game, man. Like, Tosin, Tosin let the fan base down, in my opinion. Because a lot of people had a really high opinion of Tosin. They thought, you know, he should start ahead of Fofana. But this, this wasn't a good game. You know, this is not the game you want to give when you're trying to break into the starting eleven. Absolutely not. So, but then, as I said, Kobe was on edge. That Salah, you know... They asked for the penalty. They didn't give it. I think that might have been a penalty, if I'm being honest. The push on Salah. That probably could have been a penalty. And then he ends up giving the penalty. Again, this rashness, this, you know, lack of composure. You know, he just sees Curtis Jones with the ball from the wrong side. He just lashes out, tries to get the ball in. Tosin is there. Sanchez is there. And even if you want, like, take a step, move front, and like, from the correct side, just go and put your leg in. You know, there's less chance of committing a foul that way. Of course, the penalty gets conceded. Mo Salah isn't going to miss. 
this this game really reminded me when Salah scored the penalty. It reminded me of uh, 2021 under Tuchel when we went to Anfield that one one draw. Kai Havertz scored Salah penalty. Reese James red card down to ten men. It really reminded me of that game. And then the second they scored that penalty, and since that first Salah penalty shout, that's when the momentum shifted. They started attacking more down that wing. And it was through that wing. Reese James' wing, there was barely any attacks. It was on that wing, Salah's wing, that all the attacks were happening. Gusto Koval getting absolutely destroyed. Reese James had to go in like the middle of the field uh, to cover up the space. And he was letting runners in behind him, Gakpo, etc. And Gakpo, of course, scored a goal, but it was offside. And then Sanchez gave away the penalty. And that is when, you know... It was really nervy because it's like, okay, where we conceded one, even after dominating for the first 20 minutes, we didn't score, we didn't shoot much. Now, you know, we could concede a second goal and this could be bad. Momentum is in their hands now. But honestly, the Sanchez one, like, when he came out to collect the ball, like, I felt there's no way, like, it was a foul. But then, of course, the way the ball just went through him, Curtis Jones fell down, it did look like a penalty. Thank God the replays showed that, you know, Sanchez got the ball and no penalty. And now we come to the Jade and Sancho penalty. At first, I didn't think that was a penalty. But then when they showed the replay, they showed that Trent's feet obstructed Sancho. First, I thought it was just like a shoulder push. He Sancho just fell down. But then when you saw the replay, that is exactly what Kozul did to Curtis Jones. And I'm not saying the referee was bad bias. It was nothing like that. But this one, I don't get why it wasn't given. I know why, of course, because Michael Oliver was the VAR. <sighs> I mean, Michael Oliver doesn't have anything against Chelsea, to be honest. But he's been making some dodgy decisions lately. Thank God for no Anthony Taylor. Because if Anthony Taylor was the referee of this game, you best believe that Salomon is a penalty. Uh, Curtis Jones is a penalty. That handball at the start for Colville would have been given. So many things could have gone bad if Anthony Taylor was referee. But then we come out for the second half. Jackson scores. And he's onside. This is when, you know, you think that, okay, this this is a new Chelsea. Because at Anfield, after going uh, like 1-0 down, we keep on playing the way we do, we attack. He brought off Sancho at halftime, Moresca. I think it was a good, decent decision because Neto played really well. Neto is desperately pushing for like a starting spot. Let's see, let's see. But Jackson scores. Fun fact, Jackson now has more non-penalty goals you know, for Chelsea since the start of last season than Cole Palmer. Th- that is some serious stats. He has 8 GA in 8 games this season. Jackson, Jackson is doing good. Madweke, another thing I like, you know, he wasn't being allowed to cut in. So he was always, like, getting past Robertson on the line, getting into the box and doing something. This is why we need Madweke. He's the only one who can do these kind of things. Sancho was struggling against Trent, but Madweke, Robertson never tackled him. Madweke always got past, even though in, then, like, you know, ball got cleared out, tackled, etc. He always got past him, ran in, into the box. That's what we need. Cole Palm was absolutely marked out of the game. It's fine. There are games like this. Um, what else? He brought off Reese James and uh, Tosin for Enzo. Good. That was like slightly an attacking change. And for Badi Ashil, and Badi Ashil did decent. Uh, it was a random, like, a random substitution. But yeah, Tosin was not having a good game. Badi Ashil did. So yeah, not bad. Reese James, I think it was a managing minute situation, if I'm being honest. The, you know, Reese James substitution. That's what it looks like. But then the thing is, we got Nkunku on later on. We just couldn't get a second goal. And why did we need a second goal? Because Liverpool scored three minutes after we scored. And given the VAR check, you know, they basically scored instantly after we scored. It looked like they were trying to play an offside trap, but it really wasn't great. You know, a uh, ball in from Mo Salah. Curtis Jones is just there. Koval and Reese uh, were there. You know, none of them were able to mark him. And then Sanchez does come out, but he gets chipped. I have no idea whether Sanchez is a good or bad keeper. Because you can't really blame Sanchez for any of the goals. Except for the Brighton game. We haven't ever conceded like goals and it's his fault and he could have done better. Except for the Brighton game, as I said. But then there's moments, like, in the first half, I remember, he was trying to pass the ball. I think it hit Jota or Gakpo or something. And thankfully, it landed in his own hands. 
Like, it's moments like these which make us wonder about Sanchez. I mean, what else do we have? So yeah, they scored this uh, second goal, and then though we're dominating, though we have more possession, we just we just couldn't score. And it's sad and it's frustrating because it's the same old story again, but slightly better. We can't, uh, you know, say that this is not better. We just can't undo all the good work Maresca has done. We have to admit he's done really well. But now Newcastle has to be a win next weekend. Because we've got, uh, we are sixth right now, two points off the uh, top four. Newcastle has to be a win. Because if we lose to Newcastle, then confidence is down against Man U. Then we've got Arsenal. And then we've got the international break. So if we go into the international break having such a bad month, we could easily end up mid-table. And then, then it all goes, it all goes away. That's when we struggle. So next, you know, this is it for this game. All right, we did decent good we lost it is what it is but that doesn't cut it for next weekend next weekend newcastle has to be a win it's a must win so yeah guys i guess that's all for today kaiseido by the way kaiseido and lavia the two of them brilliant i keep saying it man i'm not a enzo hater or someone but lavia kaiseido is the midfield to go lavia is just so calm under pressure you know when we're playing out from the back he easily transitions from the defense to the attack Lavia Kaiser were amazing. Man of the match, both of them. Men of the match. So yeah, I guess uh, that's it for today's video. Bold decisions by Maresca in the lineup. Kind of paid off, kind of didn't. But yeah, the only reason why we have to say kind of didn't is because we lost. So yeah, we have to fix that up. Let's try get back on winning ways. We got Palakine Thos, whatever on a Friday, uh, Thursday. Sorry, in the Conference League. Then we've got Newcastle. Newcastle it has to be a must game. Conference leagues, all of them are, of course, must wins. So, yeah, I'll uh, see you for that one. Have a good day and goodbye, guys.